Look at that. That is such a cool feature. I love that. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm giving you an initial lifestyle review of the upcoming Air Jordan 34. Before we jump into today's video, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my brand new unboxing channel, which is linked at the top of the description. I just dropped two new videos, which I'm pretty excited about. The first of which is the unboxing of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I still can't get that right. And I also unboxed the Nintendo Switch Lite, but it isn't just electronics that I'm unboxing. I've unboxed Pokemon cards, or I guess open Pokemon cards, toys, whatever it is, I'll unbox it as long as it's not weird or gross or just too big to fit in this room. So there's a lot of things that I could unbox. I'd love it if you could check out that channel. Recently it's sort of been my passion project, so if you'd like to check that out, once again the link is in the description below. But with all that out of the way, let's jump right into the review. The Air Jordan 34 drops for the first time on September 25th for 180 bucks on the sneakers app in the Blue Void colorway. Jordan brand was actually nice enough to send me a pair early to try out and review for you guys. This is actually the Eclipse colorway, which I believe drops in November. I should also say that this is not going to be a performance review. I haven't had a chance to play in the shoe at all, and as of right now, because other people have had the shoe much longer than I have, there are much better performance reviews out there than anything that I could ever do. In particular, Chris from Wear Testers review is excellent. It's one of the best performance reviews I've ever seen on this sneaker, so if you're looking for performance, that's the video to check out. He's also just a good dude, so it's definitely worth checking out his channel if you haven't yet. But the Air Jordan 34, as the name would suggest, is the latest Air Jordan flagship model for 2019. This is a shoe that all the big Jordan brand athletes will be playing in this year, like Zion Williamson. And like most performance Jordans in recent years, it is a pretty solid improvement over the previous model. Unlike the Jordan 31, 32, and 33, the Air Jordan 34 was not specifically designed to be inspired by the Air Jordan 4. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't elements on the shoe that remind you of the Air Jordan 4. The design decisions behind the Air Jordan 34 were heavily informed by feedback from the Air Jordan 33. And because of that, there are a lot of pretty major improvements on the Air Jordan 34. The first of which is that the Air Jordan 34 might be the lightest Air Jordan sneaker ever made. All the non-essential parts of the shoe were stripped away so that only the most functional aspects of the sneaker remained, making the sneaker as light as possible. And it really is a surprisingly light sneaker and it feels great on feet. But jumping into the shoe itself, a majority of the upper is covered in this very thin black plastic mesh. This mesh is actually thicker than it looks and is surprisingly durable. It's also very breathable because the upper is primarily just covered in mesh. The toe of the sneaker does have an extra material backing the mesh for added reinforcement, and you've also got some fuse overlay around the tip. But in the midfoot of the shoe, you can actually see your finger through the mesh because that's the only real material on the midfoot. Something else that kind of surprised me was how well this mesh actually held its structure. Even though mesh is usually a pretty flimsy material, it's not on this sneaker, and it seems like something that will hold up for a while. Moving back on this sneaker, you've got this synthetic leather material with the Air Jordan 34 logo printed on the side of it. Another big change on the Air Jordan 34 was the removal of a fast fit system. That was the lacing system on the Air Jordan 33 where you pulled the strap and it tightened these little wires around your foot which worked fine, there was nothing wrong with it, but it just felt a little bit flimsy and I personally preferred regular laces. Obviously the Air Jordan 34 opts to go back to standard laces and I believe one of the main reasons for doing that is to save weight. Because the fast fit system did have this whole gearing mechanism in the midsole which I think probably did add some weight. I also just prefer the fit of standard laces too because you can really customize which part of the shoe is going to be tight around your foot and which part isn't going to be tight which you couldn't do with the fast fit system. Underneath the laces you've got a thin black tongue and at the top of the tongue you've got your first Air Jordan 4 accent with the white Jumpman and the flight text embroidered underneath it in black. Inside the sneaker you've got a pretty heavily padded ankle area, but that's really the only padding that you get on the upper. The rest of the upper is pretty minimal. One thing I've noticed though is that this padded area is actually part of the heel counter and because of that is sort of a separate piece and it ends inside the inside of the shoe and because it is technically a separate piece it does have an edge that runs down to the bottom of your foot if that makes any sense at all and that edge can sometimes jam into the back of your ankle and it doesn't happen all the time but it happens enough to where kind of bothered me. It wasn't a huge deal and I only really noticed it when I put the shoe on and every time I put the shoe on, but it was something that really didn't bother me after about a minute or two. The insole of the Air Jordan 34 in the Eclipse colorway comes in black with the Jumpman printed on the heel in a gloss black. As for fit, the Air Jordan 34 definitely fits true to size. It is a performance basketball sneaker, so you will have to loosen up the laces to get into the shoe, but once you get in there, it fits like a glove. But as I always suggest, if you have the chance to try the shoe on first before you buy it, make sure to do that to make 
sure you're grabbing the right size for you. Continuing back in the midfoot of the shoe, where the mesh ends and the heel counter area starts, you actually have this piece of fuse overlay that ends in this sort of padded circle, which I guess shows where your ankle is. Something I found kind of interesting about the mesh that they used on this upper is that it reminds me a lot of the mesh used on the Air Jordan 4. And I know this shoe isn't totally inspired by the Air Jordan 4, of course there's some design details that are pulled from it, but I think that was done on purpose, and I really like the way that it's sort of a subtle callback to that sneaker. Then moving around to the back of the shoe, on this particular colorway, you've got a white leather heel counter with the Jumpman in black, and sort of, I guess, his speed lines after him. Or maybe that's the eclipse happening, I'm not totally sure what's going on there. One kind of cool detail about the heel on the Air Jordan 34 is that each colorway will have a different emblem on the heel. The first colorway that was announced, which I believe was sort of a white cement colorway, actually had the Nike Air branding in red on the heel, which I thought was awesome. And obviously that detail draws some inspiration from the Air Jordan 4. Moving down on the shoe, you get to this bright white midsole that provides a really nice contrast between the upper. The midsole of the Air Jordan 34 actually has a pretty huge air zoom unit in the forefoot and in the heel of the sneaker which means the impact protection on this shoe is excellent. Not only that, but this very noticeable detail in the middle of the sneaker is actually the Eclipse Plate, which replaces the outgoing Flight Plate. The Eclipse Plate is apparently an upgraded version of the original Flight Plate, and it should provide you a little bit more bounciness and springiness, and I'm all for that. I gotta say though that I think my favorite part of the Eclipse Plate is that you can see through it. That's pretty childish, I know, but it's dope. For me, the Eclipse Plate is my favorite part of the Air Jordan 34. I think design-wise, it's striking, I think it's really unique, and it really defines the shoe, and I love that about it. Then moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this white rubber outsole with herringbone traction, and this apparently was one of the biggest asks from Jordan Brand athletes. They really wanted excellent traction on their sneakers, and it really seems like Jordan Brand delivered because this traction seems beastly. Not only that, but the actual direction of the herringbone pattern is very reminiscent of the Air Jordan 4, which I totally think was intentional. I've gotta say, that aesthetically, I think the Air Jordan 34 is the best looking performance Jordan model in years. I think it's got an incredibly striking look, and I might even be willing to wear this shoe casually, which is kind of crazy to say. Performance wise, I've heard a lot of good things about the Air Jordan 34, and from my own personal experience of walking around in the shoe and running in the shoe, I've really enjoyed it. If you're looking for a new pair of ball shoes and you're willing to drop the 180 bucks that it costs to grab a pair of Air Jordan 34s, I do not think you'll regret it. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Air Jordan 34 and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself or whether you're gonna let this one go. So let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you'd like to check out my brand new unboxing channel, there's already like six videos up there. The iPhone unboxing and the Nintendo Switch unboxing are the most recent. So if you wanna check those out, links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.